My name is Brian, this is The Vapor Chronicles, and today we're gonna to take a look at a brand new project from Tony B. This is from Vandy Vape, Pulse 24 RDA. And I can tell you this, the old saying that you know size matters, well, yeah, it sort of does, but as we all know, it's all about the girth, right? So, original Pulse 22 RDA, taller than the 24, but the 24 is the right size where it matters. So I'm gonna throw a build on it, I'm gonna break it down, show you the ins and outs, and then give you my final impressions. So let's take a closer look. Let's dive in and break it down. All right, so with your kit, it looks like you have a 510 drip tip adapter, you have an Ultim uh, drip tip, Delrin, black, and a little bit of user manual action, or tool. And it looks like they give you some of these grub screws. Same as the previous Pulse. It looks like a bottom feeder pin, but it's not. All it is is just an adjustable 510 pin. So that's what this is. So if you're not gonna squonk, this is what you'd be using. But we're gonna squonk, oh yes. Whole bunch of different O-rings are included. And your 510 drip tip adapter. Looks like they give you four extra grub screws. For those who haven't seen it, I did a detailed review of the original Pulse 22. And anytime there's sort of a sequel or a, uh, a larger diameter version of an RDA, I like to compare the original and see what kind of improvements we've made or what the differences are between that and the new one. So we're gonna do that today on this video. So as far as the build deck goes, obviously diameter is larger. As far as the screws go and the screw hole locations, uh, you know, everything's sort of, uh, this one sort of was angled on the side and on the side, and now you have the two uh, post screws. These are Phillips that are in there. And you can also use the grub screws, and then there's two on the other side. Everything is sort of more centered on this one. You have your positive post, and then you have your two negative uh, posts there. So it's one solid positive, and then it looks like one solid negative with a little split in the middle there. And that's actually a, a squonking channel for, uh, for the juice to flow. When you squonk, which is kind of cool because it's not open in the middle here, but there's a channel here, here and here. So when you squonk, the juice is actually gonna come out. And notice also, just like the original pulse, this is raised up. So there's actually a drop off right on the side here. So when you, when you squonk, juice flows and then it drops into this juice well, which is really cool. I love the position of the juice wells. It's gonna be easy. You're gonna have positive negative leg, positive negative leg. So you're gonna have your wicking sort of draped over, draped over, draped over, and draped over. And you'll have your two coils uh, centered here. Very cool. And I have a sneaky suspicion that you'll be able to use a single coil in this also. I don't see any reason why not, but we'll take a look at that in a little bit. As far as the cap goes, much lower profile on this cap. The 22 is really, really tall, and this one is much lower. One O-ring instead of two, which was on the 22. And uh, if you look at the angle of the airflow tubes, these were extremely aggressive very sharp downward motion, and look how much more relaxed these ones are. They also don't go into the inside as far as before, um, and they're not as long as before. From the underside, you can see, there's a lot less intrusion on the inner lip. See that lip here and the other side? Now also remember, this lip is larger on this one, and this was only 22 millimeters. This one's much smaller and it's 24. So you're gonna have a lot more space inside here to let airflow come in and also go out. Same Pulse logo and also the Vandy Vape logo. I believe these positive posts are milled into the deck 
if I'm not mistaken. You have this really big insulator that runs here and it follows around here and then it goes in here, right? So I think this positive post is removed by this right here, which is always the case. And I think if I'm not mistaken, because I don't see a screw at the bottom, it's pretty safe to say that this is milled into the deck, this post and then this post also. But I'll get the positive post out and we can take a peek. All right, so there's where you lock your legs in, there's your screws. So pretty cool, pretty cool. See the 510 pins nice and raised. Not that you would use this on a hybrid because it's obviously the squonking pin, but the other pin is adjustable so you don't have to worry about that either. So with the positive post out, you can see, yeah, that's milled into the deck just like I thought. There's your insulator. This also gives you a good view of how the squonking channel works. See that? So it's open on this side so juice can come up through the middle and then it can part paths here and also on that side. If you watched my original review of the Pulse 22, one of the biggest issues that I had was the height of the airflow uh, tubes was too far above where you would normally place your coils. So for me to get the maximum flavor out of it, I had to sort of raise the coils up higher than where the air would come in so that the air would go under the coils and then come out past the coils and then into my mouth and that was the best flavor. It was logical and it made sense to do it that way. In this case, they've made a smart decision. Placing the air holes so close, check this out, so close to the bottom, I mean they're basically almost like bottom side. Look at this. So you're going to get crisscrossing air and the coil is going to be mounted right there. So once it hits the coil, even if, it, if it's pointing downward, it doesn't have any place to go. There's no place below it to get trapped and then come back out. So you're not going to have that same issue. I would imagine that the flavor on this thing is going to be ridiculous, but we'll see about that. And I'm just going to gauge the depth of how deep these go in. So we're going to place a coil here and a coil here. The depth of the holes appears to be about halfway down that leg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this about halfway down. So right about there, a little past halfway, I think that should be perfect. Let's find out. There is so much space in here. I mean, <laughs> this this is crazy. I'm doing a little build on this because I want to keep the resistance low because I'm using it on a mechanical, the Boxer 2700. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty good. So just double checking how the airflow is going to hit. So what that's going to do is it's going to go directly in, hit the coil right on the lower portion, and then come, actually, barely break this. It's probably gonna, even if it goes past this coil, by the way, the airflow is gonna continue going down, and actually it'll go under the other coil, which is gonna be right here, and then that should, should just be an absolutely delicious flavor. The two cross stream airflows, because look at this, when I go like here, when that air comes in, look where it's hitting right underneath that coil. So it should be perfect. Perfect, perfect. They say they never cross the streams, but in the Pulse 24, we're gonna cross the streams.
keeping everything nice and fluffy. Nothing's pressed in there or stuffed in there. Nothing crazy. So let's give this a squonk and see how it performs with it. So I'm just gonna squeeze this right here, plunge away. So let's leave this channel open. We can look right from the middle. Perfect, absolutely perfect. See how that just evenly goes right out those sides and it's just filling that well up. I love it. Yeah, <clears throat> this is gonna be a perfect squonking RDA. And look at how well they're getting saturated. Look at that. As soon as I fire, look at that. Sucking that juice up. Perfect. You can see there's a little notch right here, right in the little lip right there. And what happens is when you pop this on, it's not gonna wanna go down all the way. And then once you hit that notch, it'll stop and it locks it on. This is helpful for lining up your air holes or your airflow, obviously, but it's also really good for uh, not allowing this to spin so that if you wanna adjust your top airflow, you can do that. Now, some of you OCD people out there might be concerned if you feel like this is not perfectly lined up and that's actually normal. Uh, the reason that you see that little bit of silver there is because the air holes are downward, okay? So it's, it's impossible to machine them so that it's perfect, or maybe not impossible, but that's part of the drawback of having slanted tubes coming down. So um, if you want, you can do a single air on there and have one air hole going in, or you can do two, it's up to you. Or you can even do split, split, split split whichever uh, one you prefer you now if you wanted to throw a single coil bigger diameter coil in here this would be perfect for single coil also you would just do leg one leg two and then the airflow can come on both sides of it and it should be awesome flavor just the same all right so let me uh, pop this on i'm gonna actually take this drip tip off all of your standard a10 drip tips are going to fit so if you have one for the icon or the original pulse or the goon or the goon 1.5 they should all fit on there but this half moon mods one really suits this and tell me that's not sexy the pulse is perfect on the boxer so let's zoom back out and let's take this beauty for a vape let's do it there you go the up close subtle changes make the biggest impact and big big differences in the final outcome now 22 millimeter single coil, great for certain builds, certain setups, certain resistances. And as you saw, if you watched my original 22 review, there were some improvements that could have been made. I can tell you that all the things I had trouble with on the 22 are perfectly fixed on the 24. But before we get into all the pros and cons and things like that, I just wanna give a huge congratulations to Tony also for releasing at the same time. Is he killing it? Like 2017, the year of Tony B. Uh, Sugar Lips. Blue Pucker. He's got a new e-liquid line called Sugar Lips, and this flavor is called Blue Pucker, and it's like a blue slushy, all right? And I got to tell you, it reminds me of ice cream truck growing up, chasing it, getting those snow cones, and then the juice that's at the bottom of the snow cone. This, that's what this tastes like to me. The Blue Pucker tastes absolutely phenomenal in the Pulse 24, and that's really one of the biggest strengths of the Pulse. The flavor is banging. It is so good, so, so good. Uh, but let's take it for a vape, Blue Pucker. I gotta warn you, if you vape too much of the Sugar Lips line, people are gonna wanna kiss you because your lips are gonna taste sweet as hell. Uh, the flavor, it's a blue raspberry. It's like a sugary blue raspberry icy, and it's got that sweetness. It also has a little bit of tart in there, and it's awesome. I mean, I've been killing it. My wife loves it, and she only likes one flavor of e-liquid in the past three years. She likes one flavor, and she thinks this is awesome. Uh, I've been killing it. 100 milliliter bottles. Links below if you're interested in picking this up. An awesome, awesome in the Pulse 24. So with the airflow wide open, you're going to get direct airflow right on those coils, giving you that maximum flow directly past the coils and then up to your face. And it delivers some of the best flavor ever from an RDA. I 
I used it on the squonker and actually during the up close you saw I did a build on the squonker. I vaped it for a few days in squonk mode. Now I'm just dripping right in the top. And the cool thing I like about this, having that airflow adjustment ring split in the middle, you can do what I just did which is dump juice directly in there and I'm not getting any leaking or anything like that. Uh, but you can also pop this off you can see your coils, you can paint your coils, and even though it's that postless deck where you're not gonna have that real deep juice well except for those two drop-off points on each side, it still allows you to just, I mean, I've actually vaped this thing where the, it looks like the coils are swimming in e-liquid and it still vapes fine. If you have it a lot a hot, it might, you know, pop a little spray in your mouth, but who, I don't mind getting a little bit of juice in my mouth, so it's not a big deal to me. The airflow is smooth, direct, and just flavorful, man. The flavor on this thing is dynamite. If you adjust the airflow and you close it off and you do like a 50-50 split on each side, you get a more restricted draw. You could also do it 50-50 by shutting off one side of the tubes and having the tubes split the way that they are, you can see that one dot where it's stainless and the other dot where it's black. Well, that means one side of the coils getting hit from one side, the other side of the coils are getting hit from the other side, and they both collide. And I can tell you this, I haven't noticed a flavor drop off any, at all with it set up like that. It's great. Even more restricted would be just having one of the holes on each side halfway open. It gets a little more noisy in that position. So I prefer, if I'm gonna go for that tight draw, is have both sides open and have like a quarter of each hole open. It's gonna be smoother. But you know, play around with your coil height, your coil distance, play around with the coil diameter, the material of coils that you're using. There's so much playing around to do with RDAs to get it nailed in where it's the right heat the right flavor, right vapor production, correct resistance. Whether you're gonna put it on a mech mod, it's got the protruding 510, or you're gonna put it on a regulated mod like the Boxer in blue. And this Boxer was actually white when I started vaping this, but this blue pucker is so damn good, I guess it affected the Boxer. I don't know, it's real good. So let's get into some pros and some cons. Pros, great flavor. I said it a thousand times, this thing flavors top notch, no issue there. This thing is a true squonker's dream, okay? Having those channels, and you saw how beautifully that the juice just flows right through the channels in the middle, drops into the juice well, saturates your coils, and you're gonna get flavor, and it doesn't leak. This is perfect for squonking, and also not for squonking, because you can drip in the top, you can paint your coils by pulling off the cap, you have a lot of flexibility. It's easy to build on, okay? It's not rocket science, you know? You cut your legs, just like you saw in the up close, Place your coils, lock them down, leg by leg, and everything's secure, easy to manipulate position, and, and there you go, you're ready to vape after you wick it. The O-rings, the post screws, uh, the drip tip, all those are perfectly smooth, the threads are great, everything is just well built, perfect. I love the fact that the top cap locks in place, it, it makes it so it's not confusing, you don't have to worry about positioning your airflow over the coils because they're always positioned over the coils. Also, when you adjust your airflow, it doesn't spin the base because it's locked into place and you can really dial it down to wherever you want and I really like that. Also, I know the Pulse 22 is single coil. This thing you could easily do single coil. Put a three, three and a half millimeter single coil right in the middle, pull your wicking through, drop it down in the channels and vape away. It's awesome for single coil, awesome for dual coil, which makes it really flexible. The cons. It is really tough to find cons on this, I'm telling you. The way I vape, the style of vapor that I am, I like a lot of airflow and I like smooth, good flavor. I like a, a price point that's affordable. This thing sort of checks all those boxes. Postless decks, some people love them, some people hate them. I think it's good, but one of the things that a postless deck does, having the positive and the negative post or, or platform, I guess, of, of the postless deck, uh, it fills up a lot of the juice well. So you're not gonna have a real deep juice well. So if you're gonna take the cap off, make sure you take just the top one off if you're filling it with a lot of juice, like over dripping like I like to do, because you could leak if you do that. Also, I wish the inside sleeve on this version was black. Not the build deck itself, but the actual sleeve here. And the reason for that is, just because I'm a little bit OCD, when I spin this, you can see when I have one hole open, it shows the stainless through there. And you know, I'm just picking at cons here, but that's one of the things that I noticed. 
So not many cons, huge pros, great job, Tony B, Vandy Vape, such a great RDA that I've been enjoying. I'm going to continue to enjoy. So if you guys want to enjoy it, if you want to pick up some Blue Pucker, if you want to pick up the Bottom Feeder RDA, the Pulse 24, links below in the description of this video. And I got a whole lot more where this came from, so I'll see you soon. Have a good one.